this class we will see this uh, load combinations. So, we have discussed about various loads. So, we will see how to combine the various loads. Then there is the two different types of design. We will see how to do the design using these two methods. So, these are the various loads to be considered. One is the dead load, vertical live load, impact or dynamic effect of live load, cranes, ship loader, unloader, material handling equipment loads, centrifugal forces of vehicles moving on curve, earth pressure, birthing, mooring and seismic forces. In addition, we have the temperature stresses also that is not listed here. So, we have to discuss about the temperature effect also. So, these are the various equipments, mechanical handling equipments on top of a structure. So, when these uh, equipments are moving, you will have some impact as well as the dynamic loads. That is what we have written that the impact or dynamic effect of live load, these are the things to be considered. So, as per this code, all the members shall be designed to sustain safety safely the effect of the combination of various loads, forces and stresses that can possibly coexist. So, what we are trying to say is, when there is a loads, different loads are acting, there is only certain combination which is possible, possibly coexist. That is what it means. Birthing and mooring, can it coexist? Yes, sir, no. Because when the ship is hitting the structure, you will get a birthing. When the ship is moving away from the structure, mooring will take place. So, birthing and mooring will not coexist. Can you tell any other uh, two forces which cannot coexist? Civil engineering practice, we consider one type of. Uh, yes. Earthquake and wind cannot coexist. Why? Huh? What is it? Probability of occurrence of earthquake and wind is very low. That is why we say it has not occurred in the history so far. The earthquake and the storm or cyclone has not occurred together. That is why we do not consider it together. So, when you do the calculation, we should distinctly tabulate the various combinations and then carry out the design. That is what it means. This is very important. So, this figure shows there are two combinations, two sets of combination. One set is limit state of serviceability, another is limit state of collapse. Okay. Limit state of collapse is due to stresses in the member. Suppose I want to find out what is the strength of this, I can apply a tensile force like this, I am not able to break. <laughs> what else can be applied to break it? Will you see let me break, it is breaking. What is the force here? Shear or bending? I do not know, it may be shear or bending and the fracture is, uh, it is a brittle fracture. Okay. There are three forces and three movements by which the structure will collapse. The three forces are axial force, shear force in two directions, bending movement in two direction and a torsional movement. Right? These are the three stresses due to axial forces, three stresses due to bending movement. If it reaches the yield, it may fail. That is what is given by limit set of collapse. What is limit set of serviceability? Limit set of serviceability, there are two components. One is the deflection, another is a crack wet. So, the deflection should be within permissible level, the deflection should be span by 250. Suppose, span is about 2 pi, 2, 25 meters and the span by 250 will become 100 millimeters. So, we can allow 100 millimeter of deflection. Okay. 100 millimeter means this will be the 100 millimeter deflection. The crack width is 0 0.3 mm or 0 0.2 mm or 0 0.1 mm. Normally, the serviceability criteria is for a load factor of 1. What is the service load? Service load means actual load that is likely to occur. Whereas, limit state of collapse is considering the probability variation of the loads that can occur, we will increase the load factor. In some cases, we will reduce the load factor also and find out what happens in limit state of collapse. So, in limit state of collapse, we check against the yield stress, whereas in limit state of serviceability, we check against the deflection and crack width. The crack width is a function of stresses. 
that is deflection is a function of Young's modulus and moment of inertia of the structure. So let us take this combination, this combination is 1.5 dead load, 1.5 live load, 1 earth pressure, 1 hydrostatic pressure and 1.5 there is a mistake here it should be either birthing or mooring forces this one combination. The other combination is the wind and seismic will not coexist together. So, we have this as the wind and this as the seismic. So, we have dead load, live load, air pressure, hydrostatic pressure and then wind force or dead load, live load, air pressure, hydrostatic pressure and uh, seismic force. So, we do not check for seismic force and wind force serviceability. So, these two cases are not there. The secondary stresses are due to temperature. Then we have birthing or mooring forces for checking. So, we have what are the forces which will always act? This dead load will always be on the structure, then what else will be there? Active air pressure will always be there, then the differential water pressure also will always be there. So, there will be hydrodynamic force may be due to wave and current that they can be there or cannot be there, whereas this dead load air pressure and differential water pressure should be always present in all the load combination. This point is clear to you, whenever you do a load combination you should have dead load, live load, I am sorry dead load, air pressure and differential water pressure in all the combinations. The vertical line is a combination, one combination, this is another combination, this is the third combination, fourth, fifth and sixth combination, but there are much more combinations typically around 30 to 40 combinations will be there, but this is what is given here. So, we do not give uh, differential water pressure and air pressure higher load factor in this uh, limit state of collapse because in the limit stage air pressure will become active air pressure coefficient only. That is why in case of uh, higher forces coming onto the structure due to dead load or live load or mooring force or birthing force, the air pressure will reduce from air pressure at rest to active air pressure and remain constant that is why we do not increase the load factor for this and differential water pressure we can estimate exactly. So, we do not do that also, but in case only these three combinations are done we will give this. Dead load we are reducing because in some cases there is a tension in the pile then we have to use a lower load factor. So, this when you do an example I will explain why 0 0.9 is required. Dead load means if you are providing a thickness of let us say 400 millimeter as a deck thickness Sometimes we may increase the thickness also while construction, sometimes it may be less also. That is why we give a lesser load factor. This is increase in permissible stresses for uh, uh, working stress design. This is a permissible bearing pressure in the soil medium. So, what is a permissible increase? 15 percent in concrete and 15 percent in steel and timber for some combinations. Sometimes the birthing mooring force is present it is 33 by 13 percent and in case of wind force or seismic force we can increase the permissible stresses in working stress by 33 1 by 3. So, when you use the crane and the machine operating loads along with uh, dead load combined with wind load we have to by the manufacturer the normal wind load with maximum wind load as specified in IS 875 whichever is more severe should be taken for design purposes. So, there are two cases for wind load one is specified by the manufacturer another is as per IS 875 whichever is maximum that you have to do. So, when you do the wind loads which will be given by the manufacturer that is based on the operating wind load condition another is as per IS 875 which gives the wind speed at a particular location. So, whichever is maximum that you should consider. So, when you consider the birthing force you know do not need to consider the crane or machine operating load. So, the, this condition is when the vessel is coming and birthing no, that time the crane will not operate what it will operate ship is just nearing. So, crane will not operate. So, you do not consider the crane operation load along with the birthing load. So, when the birthing is not there you consider the crane or operating load. So, this is all of you answered the wind load and seismic force need not be deemed to act simultaneously. The wind load there are two cases one is the operating load another is a extreme load that is a cyclonic load. 
will discuss later about this. There are two types of design, most of you may be knowing only the limit state method, but the Walder method is called as a working stress method. So, we have to study about these two methods, I will give you a brief introduction of these two methods. So, we can design by using any of the two methods, so RCC or pre stress concrete, whereas for designing structures with other material working stress method should be adhered to, this is a old specification. because. Uh, for steel and timber we normally use the working stress method that is what is given here we do not use the limit state method. Whereas, for concrete as per today's uh, criteria even if you design by working stress method you have to check for limit state method that is the present scenario. So, concrete even if you want to adopt working stress you can adopt, but you have to check for limit state also. What is limit state method? In a limit state method we assume that the structure is unfit when it reaches a particular state called limit state at which it ceases to fulfill the function or satisfy the condition for which it is designed. So, that is what the philosophy for a limit state method. The structure shall be designed to withstand safety all loads liable to act throughout its life and it shall also satisfy the serviceable requirements such as limitations on deflection and cracking. The first one is for collapse second one is for deflection and cracking that is what it implies. So, we use what is known as a partial safety factor for material strength, I will be asking this question, I am already telling all the questions, already answer is there, what is the partial safety factor for concrete? Steel? Why? why concrete is having higher uh, partial safety factor and steel is having lesser partial safety factor. Huh? Yes, steel is made in factory, so quality control is there and it is more ductile compared to concrete. So, your stresses happening due to the load should be less than the stresses which will be coming with the material. This is a simple way of expressing that is the stresses happening due to the load combinations various loads. This F L can be dead load, live load, seismic force, wind force. You attach that with a load combination, load factor, this is called as a load factor. This is material factor. So, this material factor is 1.5 bar steel, 1.15 for steel and 1.5 for concrete. So, whatever is the yield stress of the member, we are reducing the stress because of probability nature of stresses that can have yield strength. So, we are reducing the stresses and increasing the load. The load can be increased, the load factor can be 1.9, can be 1.2 and 1.5. These are the various load factors. Sometimes 1.35 also will be there. So, we are increasing the load. 0.9 I will explain later why we are doing that. So, the load is increased probabilistic nature, the strength is reduced. So, whatever stress you are getting due to this after doing the analysis, you find out the stress. Suppose there is a stress bending stress in the member, let us say sigma B C bending compression stress, this should be less than sigma B C allowable. So, this is a stress coming in the member due to the actual load that should be less than allowable stress. The allowable stress depends on the material what you are using. If you are using M grade of concrete M30, M35 or M40 it depends on this. If you are using Fe415, Fe500 depends on the stress 
it is nothing to do with the loads acting on the structure it depends on the material what you are using the allowable stress. So, whereas this bending compression stress in a member a circular pile or a beam member it depends on the load which is acting on the member based on that you have to do. Then we may have a combination of uh, stresses so sigma C C divided by sigma C C allowable plus sigma C B C divided by sigma C B C allowable should be less than or equal to 1.0. This is another criteria this is normally we use it for working stress design. So, sigma C C it is a stress acting on the member divided by sigma C C allowable this is uh, compressive strength in concrete, this is uh, bending compression in concrete. This allowable stress when you have the interaction you will have a bending compression and direct compression. Suppose you have a pile this is a water level you have a load and bending moment. So, this diameter is about 1.2 meter this is the P this is m due to this you will calculate the bending moment and uh, force at any section sigma c c will be p by a sigma c b c will be m by z z is equal to i by y. So, this is how we calculate sigma c c and sigma c b c sigma c c allowable and sigma c b c allowable based on this this uh, this f y by phi y will give sigma c c allowable or sigma c b c allowable. So, when you talk about this column this column can be short column or it can be a long column. What is the difference between short column and long column? Hmm? What is it? Yeah, tail by a it is greater than what value you will get long column. 12 means long column. 12 means long column. So, the permissible stress level we have to multiply by a reduction factor depending on long column or short column that depends on the length of the member which is L. So, you have to calculate K L by R ratio this is called as slenderness ratio so k is the factor for a cantilever what is the value of k 2 that is a effective length factor l r is equal to radius of gyration that is equal to root of i by a so all these things you know you have to reduce the allowable stress by a reduction factor there is a formula for CR if you see the working stress we can do it. So, this is the limit state this is working stress for combination limit state also there is a uh, formula for uh, combination. So, in a limit state method what we will do is we use this curve this is given in a code called as uh, SP 16. So, here we have P u by F c k d square here we will have m u by F c k d cube. So, we have the curves here like this. So, here we write P by F c k this is equal to 0 0.02 0.04 0 0.06 like this. Is value is 0.05, the value is value from 0.1 to 0.6 like this. So, when you do the P L and F L combination phi L and F L you will get the axial force in the member that is called as P U, you will get M U that is the bending moment, F C K is the grade of concrete, this is your F C K. This P by F C K is nothing but percentage of steel 
a s t by i d square by 4 into 100 divided by f c p. Suppose uh, your value comes somewhere here let us say you calculate the p u it is a member acting on this you calculate the m u acting on the member then you find out p u by you know the diameter what you assume you know f c k you can calculate p u by f c k d square it comes point 0.1 you get m u by f c k d cube you get this point then this p by f c k comes equal to let us say 0.037 if you use f c k as 40 so p will be Point four eight percent which is a state. So when you do the analysis, you will have the pile. Let us assume the diameter of the pile is taken as one point two meter. There is what is known as the reinforcement here. Then we will have the steel here. So, this percentage you can calculate this is your AST area of steel it is equal to 1.48 into pi d square by 4 into Is it correct or not correct? I think it is only 200 here. So, you will get the area of steel. Please write down all these things. So, in the design, what we are doing is all of you know we are doing an analysis with a particular diameter of the pile. What is to be found out? What is to be found out is what is the area of steel which you have to provide. How to find out the area of steel? You do the analysis for the load combination, find out what is the axial force and bending moment. Then you go to SP 16, this interaction chart is given. This interaction chart is given for different grades of steel. It is given for Fe 215. 250, Fe 415 and Fe 500. It is also given for different P dash by D ratio which is 0 0.05, 0 0.10 and 0 0.15 and 0 0.20. Where D dash is the cover and D is the diameter of the pile. SP 16 if you check the curves are given for different grades of steel for different ratio of effective cover to the diameter of the pile. You go to the corresponding chart, you know what is P u and M u, this is coming from the analysis and go to this chart. If you have used the M 40 grade, you find out P u by F c k d square, you find out M u by F c k d cube, you are getting it at two points, do your horizontal line and do your vertical line, it gets here. So, this P by F c k this is 0.02 and 0.04. So, somewhere here it may be 0.037. 0.037 into 40 that will give you the 1.48 percent. Once you get the 1.48 percent, you calculate what is the area of steel required. Then provide the area of steel. Suppose your calculation of P u by F c k d square and M u by F c k d cube does not fall within the chart, then you have to go back and revise the diameter. Suppose you get the values very close to this, 0 percent steel is coming, then you can reduce the diameter from 1.2 meter. And so, you have to do the design. This interaction chart when they have developed they have included already this 1.15 and 
1.5 in the preparation of the charge. This uh, percentage of steel what you are providing generally it should be in the range of 0.8 percent to 2 percent sometimes they are may allow up to 3 percent but it is very difficult to provide more than 3 percent steel because this uh, clear gap between the reinforcement should be greater than 100 millimeters then only the concrete will flow through this that is another consideration. The minimum percentage of steel is 0 0.8 even if it comes 0 percent <laughs> do not put 0 percent minimum steel requirement is 0 0.8 why minimum steel is required why we are providing minimum percentage of steel in RCC huh? to take care of thermal stresses shrinkage okay. Okay. do not put plain concrete you have to provide minimum. The minimum reinforcement is different for different type of structures for beam it is different slab it is different column it is different. Hmm? Just like here we have taken the reduction factor in the case of limit state design if it is a long column what you should do you have to calculate slenderness movement. So, whatever movement you are coming you have to add one more movement which is called as a slenderness movement and do it. Otherwise, there is an analysis called p delta analysis. If you do a p delta analysis, we do not have to add the slenderness movement. So, working stress method or permissible stress method may also be adopted in the design till such time the complete change over to the limit state method is made in other relevant Indian standards on the subject. So, I, when this uh, code was uh, developed IS 800 which is a steel code they have not implemented the limit state I think in 2000 when did the IS 800 limit state has come 2007. 2007. Now, we can do that however, as the limit state method is more rational and adaptable the designs may be carried out by limit state method. So, we recommend to use it limit state method. So, limit state method the calculation is simpler for circular columns compared to a working stress method. So, this uh, basically limit state method and working stress method what we do is suppose this is the stress strain curve for concrete this is your uh, maximum stress m 40 mean this is 40 mega Pascal what we do is we go to the stress level which is equal to 40 by 0.5 this is for limit state method this is 40 by 3 this we do it for working stress method. So, the 40 mega Pascal is the compressive capacity of the member m 40 grade 40 by 1.5 we use using a limit state method 40 by 3 we use it for working stress design that means, we are still in the linear range our stress levels are lower whereas, in working stress limit state it goes into the other the non linear part of ok. Actually this line may be slightly higher also that is what we are doing whereas, this uh, stress what we are calculating is for a increased load 1.5 times whereas, here the stress is calculated for the service load. Okay.